Howdy Earthlings, it's your old pal Jaime, the shut-in cartoonist musician, vlogcasting vlog 256 from the Corn Tortilla Press World Headquarters, located just west over the 880 freeway from East Oakland, California, on the island known as Alameda. Just finished uh, sipping my, um, my green mint tea, peppermint green tea from my Beatles ceramic cup. It was delicious. Yeah, sometimes in the day, because I don't, I drink coffee in the morning, and then later I might have some tea. So that explains that. So today, today, something I wanted to cover the other day, but uh, I uh, wanted to get some other information out without going too long. I'm, I'm going to get probably for some of you, I'm going to take this out, probably for some of you a little TMI on this. Um, uh, it's about loss. And other things, and maybe mental mental illness, but you just bear with me. I'll try to make it quick. Um, you know, lost my friend Charlie Morgan over the summer, which I'm still 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 dealing with. I mean, that that one hurt, man. I love Charlie, and when I found out of Charlie's demise, a surprise was that his former sister-in-law, but friend who I met through him, Sue Taylor, the artist, Sue Taylor who was a dear friend, also had passed away. Um, and it just, you know, kind of the one-two punch. But uh, the other morning, I get up. We get up pretty early around here. It's one of the mornings I got up early. And uh, it's about 5.45 in the morning. And I'm sitting up, and I grab my phone, and I go to just see, okay, there's no, I usually notice there's no phone calls, no text. There's a text on there. Oh, man, you know, so, of course, being a father, I'm thinking, I hope my son's okay, because no one calls me other than him. He's pretty much the only person I hear from. Get on there, and uh, it's from my friend Cheryl Henderson. But, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, her mom probably just passed. But I click it, and it's her husband. He was using her phone to inform me that Cheryl passed away the day before. Who's Cheryl Henderson, you may be thinking. Why should you care? You don't have to care. Um, being a sequential artist, a cartoonist, um, and I do biographical and autobiographical comics. I write them all myself. I draw them myself. I'm a storyteller. I tell stories. This is my, my job on the planet, and I illustrate them for you so I can hand them out. And uh, Cheryl's family, uh, Cheryl Henderson. Henderson is her married name. I won't use her maiden name. Her family used to live across the street and just down a few doors from uh, a house me and my mom and my dad lived in when I was from one to about almost five. And somewhere between two and the five there, uh, Cheryl and her family would take care of me, mostly her and her mom. But her older brother, Tommy, would get in the mix. He was like my, you know, one of my, my heroes. And they treated me so well. They treated me like one of theirs. Um, and why I say they were important is... Uh, you know, because we lived in that house from one till almost five because we moved to San Francisco after that for a few years or a couple of years. And the reason we did that is because my father, who was a troubled man and an alcoholic, was also very abusive physically as well as verbally, but mostly physically. And uh, he was married three times. My mom was a, the last wife, and he um, kicked the shit out of all three of his wives, to put it bluntly. And I do remember my mom coming to pick me up from Cheryl's family after being babysat for the day. My mom had a shiner. She had a black eye. And Cheryl's mom and her family, being the way they are, said, uh, no, they wouldn't let my mom go back to the house, nor they would give me back. And she said, you know, they said, you got to come in with your son, but you can't go back. And it was that kind of situation. Uh, so anyway... Um, we came back from San Francisco and the family was still there. My dad was gone at this point. He passed away. That's a whole nother stack of fry bread. But, uh, yeah, he was gone. And, uh, this is about a year or so after, two years after my dad died, my mom started dating somebody. So, you know, you're dating at first. You know, they're going away for weekends at Lake Tahoe or God knows where. So this Cheryl's family would babysit me for weekends, which was a blast. It was great, you know, because her and her older brother, Tommy, were just, like I said, my siblings. And uh, it was wonderful. 
Um, then, you know, in the summers, I usually got sent off. About after, a few weeks after school ended, I would get sent down to Southern California. I always got sent to beautiful East L.A. And, uh, but one year I got sent to one of the other aunts that was living in North County, San Diego. And I was gone for a summer, a school year, and the following summer. So when I got back, Cheryl's family was gone. They moved. My mom didn't know where. And uh, so for about almost 50 years, I would off and on try to find out what happened to them. Like if I'd run into somebody, every now and then I'd see one of their friends in the community, you know, older than me, and, hey, I remember you, and da-da-da. And I'd always ask, hey, have you heard from them? And nobody knew. Nobody knew. And uh, so when I was about, I don't know, 11 years old, her, her brother drifted back into town, Tommy. And that's what we used to call them drifters back in those days. And uh, he was only around for about a week. But I happened to run into him by accident. He didn't have my phone or anything, but uh, oh, it was amazing. When he saw me, he was so happy, and so was I. And I saw him like in the late morning. We spent the entire day together until evening. And uh, yeah, I remember when he walked away, I could still, I did a comic strip on it. In fact, I gave it to Cheryl. So anyway, I saw Cheryl the next year. She came into town with a friend of hers to visit. And then, yeah. So, which I know this is long, I'm a storyteller. Um, through the internet and so forth, I, I finagled a phone number. I finally found a phone number. And I found out Cheryl was married. Cheryl Henderson, her husband and her, and her grandkids. She even had a couple of kids out there with her, living in their own places, out in... Uh, Nixa, Nixa, Missouri. And so we got on the phone and we're so happy to hear from each other. And she told me that her father died in 2010, Big Tom, who I loved. He, he loved me. And uh, her brother, sadly, Tommy, uh, died in 1993. And he continued the drifting lifestyle. And uh, I mean, they even told me a tale of where he apparently rode a bike across the Mojave Desert. I mean, he camped the whole time. Uh, and not like I do. It's not like bike touring. I mean, he was like on some hoopty and, you know, like a homeless dude. And just, he was just a, an adventurer like that. Um, I'm really heartbroken here that he was gone. But I was very excited. So Cheryl said, well, you know, we're coming out to Reno where my mom lives. We're going to pick her up, take her back to Missouri. Can you come up the hill? So I drove up to Reno the appointed day and it was glorious. And seeing her mom again, Shirley and Shirley kept going on about what, what a good boy I was, a good little boy. <laughs> yeah. As a little boy, I probably was, you know. I mean, I went through, you know, I was, my friends all surmised uh, that I was ADD when I got to, like, later grade school on, and probably, uh, what do they call it, uh, the other acronym, oh, PTSD, because there's a lot of abuse in my childhood, you know, and plus, you know, people dying and me witnessing some of them doing that, and there's, there were some issues, but now that's a whole nother, again, another stack of fry bread, but, uh, yeah, so getting a hold of Cheryl, seeing them, it was great, it was like closure, so when I found out she passed, I'm not kidding, my heart's still broken, but I'm also happy that I got to reconnect with somebody that was important to me, with a part of my, my very young childhood, and, um, yeah, and just have some closure. So I miss her, and uh, yeah, I'm going to call her mom in about a week. I'm letting everything blow blow over to, over there for, so they can get all the arrangements done. And uh, I guess that's what I'm saying to all of you is, um, uh, you know, ADD, PTSD, MOUSE, all this stuff, you know, don't use it as a crutch, you know. I can't tell how many times I've heard people say, oh, my dad was an alcoholic, so our life was, yeah, you know, most dads from our generation were, and I'm not poo-pooing it, I'm just saying, you got to kind of take hold of stuff and, and deal with it, it's painful, it's difficult, just getting to the point of trying to deal with it, so I guess it's kind of like a mental health P, uh, PSA, Boy, I'm using acronyms all over the place here, so anyway, um, that, and, uh, but more importantly, just reach out to somebody, and, you know, that, you know, maybe just, just your family, you know, just people around you. Tell them you love them, you know. It doesn't hurt friends, family, people you haven't seen in years and you wondered about. Try to find them. They've probably been trying to find you. What can it hurt, you know. So, uh, anyway, that's my little rant for the day. Here we are about 10 minutes in. Man, this is one of my longer ones. Um, 
But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we got something out of it. I don't know about enjoying it. I hope your new year so far is, is going well and I hope it continues to do so. I'm hoping the same for me. What else, you know? So in the meantime, uh, let's see, what do they tell you to do here? Check out my website. Um, oh, subscribe and hit the thumbs up. I'm on a couple of platforms, not counting YouTube. I'm not sure which one does what. That's why I do it. I think it helps. I don't know. But anyway. <laughs> okay, everybody, get out there and, and, and have some fun and stay out of trouble. And you know what I'm going to say. If you can't do that, don't get caught. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.